Bro. Um, so yes, so so I'm Lee. So I'm the artistic director of, of Fluid Motion um, Theatre Company, and I'll introduce the team, the other two members of the team, in a minute. Um, but these are this is the sort of what's this the fourth fifth fluid conversation that we've had, but the first obviously of 2021, and the first of our brand new sort of program plan, which is called Resilience. So. We, we would like to sort of take people through that, talk a bit about that, hear some experiences of, of what resilience means to people um, and, and sort of just talk about how anyone can get involved in our programme of work um, across the whole year. So that's a sort of the, the loose structure. But before I launch into that, um, I'll just hand over to, to Ali first and then Natalie, just to let them um, talk about who they are and their role within the company. Ali, you can go first. Hi everyone, so I'm Ali and I'm the Executive Director of Fluid Motion. Um, I was one of the original founders, We've been, I've been doing this now for 10 years. Um, so my role has grown increasingly to become all about the funding. Originally it was more about let's make some work, um, let's, let's be creative, but now it's very much um, desk wise and uh, yeah. doing lots of funding applications yeah. and things like that. So <laughs> it's quite exciting, so it's, it's good to see the company getting bigger and growing in that way so uh, so that's my role. Thank you Ali. Natalie? Uh, my name's Natalie Watson, I'm the project coordinator for the company and I um, look after the educational and community side of, of, the, of the company. Real. Um, and then we've also got Vic who's not with us on this fluid conversation today but Vic's our, our, our fairly new um, digital marketing officer as well and she's part-time as well so so that's the four of us. Um, so what I thought I'd do to start off with is, is just talk about resilience, the, the word resilience, what that means briefly, um, and then talk about why we've chosen that. It might be quite obvious why we've chosen resilience as a term, um, and, and sort of how that leads us into our programme of work. I'll briefly talk about the programme of work we have. Um, if anyone has any questions or desperately wants to shout something at me or, or, or say anything, do um, let raise your virtual hand or, or write in the chat box this is this is really a two-way sort of um conversation that's what fluid conversations is all, all about and i could talk for ages um and i'm conscious that, that it's constantly my voice um so i we i want to hear from we want to hear from as many of, of you as possible any questions about anything the idea with fluid conversations is that you know we we um we say we work for everyone. You know, our work is about um, using theatre and the arts to talk about mental health. Um, and we do that anywhere and for everyone. That's sort of our mission. So, you know, we can't make work for everyone if we don't, you know, talk to the communities in which we work. So that's what these fluid conversations do. And and so that's so it's important that it is, it is two way, you know, even if it's Ali, what's the latest funding bid you're working on? You know, that's absolutely, whatever it is. Or Lee, you know, I don't know, how do you start the rehearsal process? Or, or Natalie, what schools are you working in at the moment? Absolutely, you know, anything you want to ask, please do at any point. And there's a bit, after I've gone through the sort of programme um, for the year, there is, there is a chance for us to discuss resilience generally together and then any other questions you have. So there are moments when you can do that, if that's cool with everyone. So why resilience for us? Well, we... Last year, we um, embarked on quite an exciting uh, moment of organisational development. So we had some, some, some funds from Arts Council England, which was brilliant, to um, bring in an uh, arts consultant, as well as two professional fundraisers, um, to help develop the work, think about who Fluid Motion is, who we make work for, why, what is the work we're doing. You know, Ali and I founded the company in 2010 and we've been on quite a big journey that's got us to this point now that we're working a lot with vulnerable communities and people specifically um, with poor mental health. That's what we've done for the last five to six years. So the development process was about realigning all that and looking forward. Obviously we were just in the middle of the, coming into sort of the, idea, the pandemic back then. So it wasn't as sort of in our faces um, as it is now. So um, we sort of started to develop what the programme would look like. Um, and it was all around really um, aligning everything we do to making high quality professional theatre and also um, incorporating our All in the Mind Festival, which some of you might know about, which is our annual um, mental health arts festival in Basingstoke, making sure that all the work we do sort of leads to the festival in some way. Um, and we had it, we didn't have a name for the, the programme. And um, we put it out to a poll, actually. So we try and make sure everything we do is as democratic 
democratic as possible. And we had a few um, words, thrive, recovery, all those sorts of words were out there and resilience was the one that the public voted for. So that's why resilience is, is, our, is our yearly programme theme. Um, we're conscious though that, that resilience is a term it's something you've heard potentially, but don't necessarily know what resilience necessarily means and how that really can um, be translated into potentially creative activity. Um, but, you know, uh, and the term resilience has developed itself and, and, and for us has created more meaning in this COVID-19 world that we live in, because for us now, our priority is about um, using our programme of work that we planned sort of pre-pandemic to now build the resilience back of artists, our community, young people and everyone we work with. So, um, so that's, that's the sort of, that's where we are with things. I think resilience is a really good term. The dictionary definition of, of resilience, here we go, is um, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties um, or the ability to um, mentally or emotionally cope with a crisis. So, and I think we think, obviously all the work that Fluid Motion does, we believe that theatre and the arts has a huge part to play in, the, in sort of uh, supporting and developing our mental health. Um, and that's what we stand for really now. We operate in the arts and health world. We're very much connected to our local CCGs, our community groups, organisations, local councils, um, and we operate in that space. So for us, really, it's about how can this year and the programme of work that we've created really benefit those that need it the most? How can arts and culture get into people's lives that it's more than purely just um, potentially entertainment, which obviously has a, a great importance, but, but it, how can it support people's confidence, employability skills, um, etc. So that's why it's resilience for us this year. And if you could just have a think as I'm talking about, um, we're getting people to sort of think about what their moments of resilience have been during this sort of challenging period, whether that's just been You've been going for a walk every day and that may helps you get in, establish a sense of routine still or whatever it is it'd be good to hear some of those things because what we're doing over this year is capturing stories of resilience that's going to be the fundamental sort of um artistic stimulus for all of our work and we start today so we will sort of launch it here with all of you um and it'd be good to get some people's ideas and suggestions about that later on so that's something to to think about um I'll briefly lay out the program then, um, and Natalie's going to talk a little bit in a minute. Um, but our, our, our program of Resilience 21 is, is four projects. The first, and obviously these are, we have plan Bs and Cs for COVID. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to talk about the plan A as if COVID is sort of manageable and we're able to do stuff um, as planned. But there are plans B and C for all of the programme this year, and we can talk about them. And, and if any of you have any questions, practical questions later on about how we create a plan B, C, D, E, F, or whatever, then again, please do let us know. Um, so the first project, which we hope, hopefully at the moment will launch in May, is the recovery project. So that is our education programme, working with 10 secondary schools in Hampshire, well actually no, across the southeast, actually not Hampshire, across the southeast, Natalie's doing that, um, working with 10 secondary schools across the southeast um, to come up with a workshop program together that explores the idea of resilience and recovery. So how can we use theatre to enable and support young people's recovery in terms of their mental health through this sort of challenging time really. Um, and that is a workshop program that goes directly into schools and we work, we, we talk um, development here at around four different topics, which will be loss, isolation, coping and emergence. And that program is being developed with education professionals and health professionals. I've talked for a little bit. I'm gonna let Natalie briefly talk about sort of where we are with that and also the resource pack that we've put together, which some of you might be interested in um, and it might be useful for some of you. So I'm just gonna hand over to Natalie to talk briefly about that, that's all right. Um, so in terms of the recovery project, I'm actually sort of blown away by how many schools we've had respond to our call out sort of before Christmas um, and even willing to think about having visitors come into the school for sort of May onwards um, and still interested. Um, so that was really lovely actually that teachers are willing to invest 
um, in young people's mental health, maybe even more so than they have thought about it before. And also um, in a really creative way, some young people may respond to a one-to-one -one counseling sessions and that's great, but actually some young people might find that quite intimidating. So like Lee said, if we can use theatre as a way of opening those doors and opening up those conversations, um, I actually think it's going to be a really, really hopefully valuable and potentially life-saving tool that we're going to have in these schools in um, sort of from May. Um, we have plan A, B and C. A is face-to-face um, -face delivery. Um, uh, plan B is outdoor delivery and plan C is online delivery. We've left online till sort of last resort, as it were, because, you know, you guys have all been on Zoom you can only get so far with a conversation or a feeling or an atmosphere with a group of young people. You need to be in the room and, and help them and guide them to know the possibilities and open up conversations. So that's where we've left sort of online to the last resort. Um, so that's just recovery in a nutshell and where we're at the minute. We were also really conscious of that doesn't happen until May and okay, what how do we still support the schools that we're in contact with them and, and potentially more schools that we want to make connections with so we created um, a resource pack which came from a steering group we had with various secondary school teachers um, and uh, medical professionals and social workers and we spoke about um, the types of topics or um, the type of resource that would be really valuable to secondary schools so we created um a 10 and 20 minutes sort of activity that any teacher can do. It doesn't have to be a drama teacher with any um, pupils from seven to 11 um, in terms of year group. You know, ideally in a tutor group or PSHE moment when sort of everyone's together um, and it's to have creative conversations and to start that ball rolling and, and asking the group, you know, similar to how we're talking to you guys, how have you built resilience? What have you overcome in the last day, week, year? Um, and, and, and getting them to um, explain it in a creative way and present it in a creative way as well. Um, so it's a free resource that we've created for schools. Um, it's on our website if you want to have a look at it. Oh, I think that's the link. link coming up there, very slick. Thank you. Um, and uh, yes, it's totally free. So take it, use it, um, pass it on to as many people as you want. It's not um, uh, something that we're trying to keep secret and hidden. Uh, that's not obviously, it's not why we're here. It's not what the company is about. So um, yeah, please, please use it as, as much as you like. Um, and yeah, that's sort of where we're, where we're at in terms of our educational and outreach work at the minute. Thanks, Nat. Yeah, so, and we hope that that's, that resource pack is the first of many. Um, so we hope that the young people that take part in that project will then be involved in the creation of another one, which then will be used after the project has physically taken place to then get shared and spread far and wide as well. So all of our projects you'll, you'll, you'll see in here, um, we, we've sort of got this element of sort of co-developing resources because we feel that, you know, a lot of the work we do you know, for no fault of, of our own, is project funding and it's for a certain amount of time. So you can't physically always be in the space with participants for a certain amount of time or, or for a year. Um, so we want to give legacy in some way and we want to support further in some way. And for us, it was about creating sets of resources, whether that's that's packs physically, whether that's audio, whether that's visual stuff. So so that's, that's our sort of um, thoughts for this year is to embed sort of the creation of resources as, as much as we can. Um, thanks, Nat. That was seamlessly delivered. Lovely. Um, so, so that's recovery. Then we have what's called the gathering project, which is really exciting. Again, it's similar, completely similar, really, to um, the recovery project in schools. But the gathering project is about going out into communities. So we've highlighted this year um, Basingstoke, because that's where we're based, but also Gosport as our priority areas this year for working this um, the gathering project in the gathering project will have similar workshop delivery content to the recovery project in schools um, 
but we're working in collaboration with um, Hampshire County Council's adult social care team um, and the NHS uh, CCG up in North Hampshire to, to help sort of um, embed some of that, um, that, that further resource in the work we do. So how can we support people to live better, feel better, um, feel more connected to their community um, through this theatre project? Um, so working with those partners. Um, so it's, it's specific workshop delivery in Basingstoke and in Gosport. Four se um, six sessions, four of which are around the topics I mentioned earlier: loss, coping, and um, lo loss, coping. What's the other one? Emergence. Uh, loss, coping, isolation, emergence. <laughs> I do know them. Just said them a lot. Um, and, but then, alongside that, we are working with um, outdoor theatre makers Gobbledygook. I don't know if anyone's aware of Gobbledygook and their work, but Lorna Rees is brilliant, and she's a, she's a she's a great friend um, to create. A, we still don't quite know what it is. It's either going to be a static um, sort of uh, installation piece that the wider community can come and share their experiences of resilience at or on or speak into, or, and this is really exciting, um, it's going to be an inflatable brain um, that might float around different communities. I don't know if anyone knows the, the Trump baby balloon that flew over London many years ago. Um, or the um, Lionel Richie balloon that was at the um, at festival a few years ago. People that made that are potentially going to be working with us on a uh, inflatable brain, which people can potentially go in or interact with again to give us their thoughts about resilience, and what that means to them, how the community are coming together. Physically, you know, the act of us putting that in a town centre or in a park gets the community together. Obviously, social distance, you know, there's 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 pro there's thoughts around that, how we do that safely. Um, but our aim is to be outside in community spaces in Basingstoke and Gospel at some point during this year. Um, so that's exciting for us. It's about, you know, putting really high quality art into communities as well. Um, and then from that, then we also create a self-care pack with those community groups. So what have those community groups got from this experience? working alongside the NHS and Hampshire County Council to create a self-care pack, tools, resources, how to keep resilient, how to keep, you know, um, independent, except all that sort of stuff as part of that project as well. So that's really exciting. And that begins sort of June, July time. And again, there is plan B, C, D, E and F of that. Um, then the other, the, other, the, the other exciting moment is that the material collected from that from the from the from Natalie's recovery project and the gathering project, all that material that we have, as, as well as all the material that we get from you today, um, we give that and we work with professional actors to create two outdoor plays around young people's resilience. So there's be one focusing on the young people's stories and then one focusing on the community stories. So there'll be there'll be outdoor pieces of theatre, and that's a process over August. And then the celebration of that is the festival, which I'm sure um, some of you may know about, but I'll also put a link in the, um, the chat box as well. So that's our annual, usually outdoor uh, mental health arts festival. So a celebration of the whole work is, is at that event. That's the year. It's quite, a, it's quite an ambitious year. Um, we, you know, we, we, we want to, where possible, do as much outdoors and with people face to face, because we believe that, um, you know, face-to-face -face communication and interaction is vital. And we need it now more than ever. So, but if we can't do do that, um, we will obviously do elements of it online. So that is the um, that's that's the plan. That's our year, and that's what we're launching today, really, with this first conversation. So, I'm going to stop talking, and I just sort of want to open this out. Um, this idea of what resilience is, what it means, and um, to get some initial sort of thoughts, ideas, maybe things you've done strategies you've come across little things you're doing i'm interested in quick wins what can we do really quickly that's a quick win for our mental health um doesn't have to be arts based at all but it'd be useful if, if some of you wanted to share some of that um either write it in the chat or, or vocalize it um and that will obviously all go towards collecting these these stories and experiences of resilience for 2021 so i don't know if natalie or ali want to fire off just to just to begin with any sort of any sort of experiences or thoughts that they have um about resilience Ali? I've been quite quiet so yeah which is unusual for me so I'll chip in first um one of the things that I found really interesting actually in, through through lockdown is that um I've taken up pilates which I never 
did before. And the reason I did it is because I was finding um, that I was increasingly spending like literally eight, nine hours a day stuck at my desk. And because I'm doing research as well, that normally went into the weekend. So it was actually seven days in a row of sitting at a desk. Um, and I started doing the Pilates and it was really weird because well, these sounds so obvious. But one of the things I discovered is that at the end of a Pilates session, you tend to have a five minute um, cool down relaxation moment. And it was just, it just took me back massively to when I was 12 years old in drama at, at school and now uh, because I'm quite old it was it was quite a nice high-tech drama room we had and we had dimmable lights which now doesn't seem like great but back back then it was amazing and um uh, and just that that five minutes of actually connecting to what you're doing and thinking just about your breath and about you and your body and what your body's doing has actually really centered me and I found it hugely helpful and I use it sometimes when I'm on a walk now making a conscious effort not to actually think about anything other than what is my immediate surroundings um and uh so a bit, bit of mindfulness there so and that's that's been massively helpful for me really helpful just that, that five minutes of just mm -hmm. me nothing else because when i'm doing the exercises the family feel and the dog the dog is a nightmare feel the right to interrupt me but there's something about me lying dead still on the floor with my eyes closed everyone sort of goes oh step away uh, that's quite good. Uh, have you got anything? Um, I'm trying to think about uh, what I want my new normal to look like. Um, and and trying to put things in place now that that will benefit me when you know because there will be an end to this. <laughs> At some point, there will be an end, and I just think you know, how do you want to, to live your life? Um, and so, yeah, I'm trying to think of, yeah, what my new normal is going to be like and, and putting things in place now um, that, yeah, that will benefit me when I come out, you know, personally and, and professionally. So focusing what I can change rather than what I can't at the minute. Cool. Anyway, has anyone else got any thoughts, comments, big or small about, about, um, what resilience is means to them thought about it at all what they've been doing be useful just to just to hear if anyone's got any these are fluid conversations not just fluid lee talking at you <laughs> anyone Hello, i'll go <laughs> go on josh hello i suppose for me um i used to hate walking i used to anything outdoors uh was not me i'm very much indoors person um and i also that come with that I also don't like talking on the phone I've never liked picking up the phone to catch up with a friend I've always been very face to face but because of the situation we're all in um, I obviously had to pick up the phone to start talking to people but what I found um, was if I go on a walk while I'm on the phone it just helped me massively so although that's only a little small thing um, it's also helped me catch up with people who I never used to speak to um, so it's helped me, but it's also helped. I've got a friend who lives in Somerset who lives alone and they've really struggled um, through this being alone, having no housemates, no one to live with. So we have a daily walk together, um, which I had before this meeting as well, which was nice. So um, and it was just it just helps them, helps them get out the house. It helps me get out the house. And um, but I now I actually actually love walking I used to think why do people go on walks for hobbies and <laughs> what is that about exercise for like leisure <laughs> um, and now I'm the sort of person that will say yes to going for a walk or yes I'll um, have a phone call but if I'm going to have a phone call with someone I'll go oh well I'll go on a walk then I think it's because I can't sit still maybe when I'm on the phone I and you're just looking at four walls but if I go out um, and I live near a woods I've discovered a woods I never knew existed <laughs> Um, I used to just walk around a field and then I found out there's actually really nice places where I live that I can and can walk. So, yeah, for me, it's helped with my fitness and my mental health and also helping my friend who also is living alone. Mm. Real. Um, I've got something similar to, yeah. to Josh in the sense that, again, we've discovered so many places around here. So we're, I'm currently living in the middle of Buckskin um, and there's a place in Basin, so I don't know if everyone's from Basin. Um, but um, yeah, um, so we've discovered loads of lovely places. Um, but something I was really struggling with is that we don't have too many rooms in the house. So, 
you're getting up, you're working in the same space, you're eating in, you're chilling in or whatever. Um, so something that we've started doing is just going out for short bursts of walks to just break up the day. So you go out finishing your day at work and then you come back home sort of thing. Um, and that's really, really helped us kind of structure the day and break up the day. Because I got into this mindset that if you're going for a walk, it's like an hour out of your day and it doesn't always have to to be that um so that's really helped us great yeah. yes Hayley. um yeah exactly the same as Faye um fairly smallish flat so it's that like getting almost annoyed at your room by the end of the day like just <laughs> and everything in it so yeah definitely that just getting outside and the days where um up until two weeks ago I was still working so again all those things with working from home but um, yeah, then trying to relax in that same space that you've been working is really difficult. So, and the days I'd feel really bad, I'd be like, you haven't been outside, but you know, I hadn't been strict enough. And it's actually, even though you know it's going to be good for you, some days you just don't do it. And you're like, why am I doing this? I know I'm going to feel so much better. So it's like, yeah, kind of getting in that routine and pattern um, and being strong enough to do something that you actually really enjoy. <laughs> but for some reason, it's just like some days, like I can't be asked. Um, but just that, like change of space as well. Um, and now kind of the same, I make myself have that short burst, even in our different rooms I do have available to kind of like, right, I'm going to go read my book in this room for a bit and then go do yoga in this room <laughs> and then go watch TV or something. And also because my husband's working from home. So it's that like, so we have space from each other. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> don't have to look at each other too long. <laughs> um, yeah. And also kind of same as you, Ali, just lots of exercise. Um, we both, um, I used to do yoga anyway, kind of on and off. Um, but really kind of have found a love for it. Um, and my husband's got into it as well. So it's been a nice thing to kind of connect with each other. And he's quite, um, he's quite good with routine and being strict. So then he's got me like, right, let's get up and let's do it, even if it's 20 minutes. So that's been quite nice as well. Just to, um, like you said, Ali, just kind of have that space where you're just focusing on that one thing and kind of your breath and moving and not being sat too long, which is a danger of mine to relax. <laughs> It's so easy to relax. I love it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah, yeah that's I love it. And then do we? Hello. Um, I'm similar to everyone else. I'm probably like Haley working. And like if you work, I find I'm working all day. Um, and I've had the unusual thing of I do three or four jobs a day, but I'm staying in the same place. And I just got my brain has to go. I'm literally sat here and I've gone, okay morning job now now different yeah. job and I haven't moved but your brain has to really switch into that different position so I found before I was doing house renovations I found just having a different job associated with a different room helped so I would physically move and start a new job in a different place but then I'd also so my partner um, has been working the whole time and he can't work from home so I've been by myself the whole for most of the day so I find that if I have no, like Hayley just said, like you find yourself, I need to go for a walk, but I, I kind of then get stuck in work. And then by this, especially over winter time, you get to the point where you're like, oh, now it's dark. I can't. But <laughs> one thing that's helped me is this is my tortoise's house. <laughs> so I got, <laughs> so this is my tortoise. Oh, Alana, can you get him out? Oh, I can. Oh, okay. So his name is Terry and I got him in July to celebrate getting a new job because uh, <laughs> you do you know always wanted one but it's an excuse but he's been great because he eats mostly weeds um so in the summer I just let him out in the garden I would do work from the garden and I'd be out and it's sunny and in the winter I'd run out of weeds in the garden so I have to go on walks yeah. to get him food so it's really getting me out and it's I know all the good places now. I know at least five different types of weeds. And I don't really care if anyone sees me with a plastic bag picking weeds in a field. I've had had some comments as well, but I'm like, it's all right. It's for my toys. He needs it. And I get very excited over weeds now. But um, yeah, I'll get him out for you too, sir. Yeah, yeah, let's see him. This is the fluid convo mascot for January. Maybe we should have a, 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 pet, a pet each month. That'd be quite interesting. Uh, oh, he's so tiny. He's tiny. Yeah. <laughs> How old is he? How old is he? I'm not too sure. He was hatched in 2019. That's all we know. Um, so yeah. assuming he is about a year and a half old. Yeah. 
cute. Um, his life expectancy oh. is 80 to 100 years. So this is also a weird thing is getting a pet that will definitely, if you, you know, if you're all okay, he will hopefully outlive us. Oh my yeah. God. So yeah, so yeah. <laughs> well, so and you, don't believe me. So you need to make provision for him in your will. <laughs> Yeah, you should look after him when alarm is gone. Yeah, basically, my auntie has a tortoise called Tristan, who's a bit older, and both her daughters, so my cousins, hate him. So I will be on their will to take um, Tristan if mm. anything happens to them. I'm get, I'm on their will. <laughs> but yeah, so it's a really bizarre moment. But and also, he's just fun to watch. He's he's yeah. got a really grumpy face, so it's like probably I can only imagine having a teenager who doesn't want anything ooh, ooh, to do with you, which is oh god, we really nearly lost him. <laughs> it's up. Yeah. I don't want that. I don't want that responsibility. Ah. The Zoom. Beautiful, lovely. And that was a nice uplifting moment. If if you know if anything, <laughs> that's just given me a boost. So you know, yeah. that's done. We're done. Cool. Thanks, Alana. Dewey, Dewey, Dewey. I, I always get your pronunciation wrong. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dewey. Dewey. Will, by, the, by next September, I I'll, will have taught you to say my I name. I know. I'm, I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. <laughs> Dewey, Dewey. Um, yeah, so um, the thing I find really interesting about resilience is I used to think I was really good at resilience. And then because of COVID, I've had to move back in with my parents. Um and about 80% of the people I know have had to move back in with their parents. Mm. And I'm having to learn resilience all over again because the stuff that I'm really resilient with has now been replaced with the stuff that my parents wind me up with. <laughs> 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 and so I'm having to learn to be resilient, not to, in, like, not, uh, not to be wound up by the stuff they do mm. in effect um like and to recognize that like some of the stuff they do that really winds me up is done from a place of love um and i know that this is a problem with a lot of my friends um and what's really useful is there's there's a couple of us who are all on the same whatsapp group and basically we just shout at each other about what our parents are up to or what our parents have said this time um and it's really really useful it's quite cathartic just to be able to like on whatsapp like type a really ranty message to a group of people that know <laughs> you know um, and every now and again, we've all got the same problem, which is quite amusing. Um, but one of the things that I've sort of um, got, what, one of the great things about living at home is I don't have to do my own cleaning. I don't have to do my own food. I don't have to do any household chores. So I've got more time, which is great. Um, so I'm able to spend a bit more time doing things that I haven't been able to do in the past, like play on the PlayStation for hours and hours and hours. And that's really great for me. Um, because it sort of removes you from everything. Um, and we're very lucky that sort of, I take basically taken over their conservatories, my office. Um, but the one thing I'm really struggling with is I'm in Wales, we're three weeks ahead of the lock of you in lock in terms of lockdown. And there's only so many walks you can go on in the rain. Mm -hmm. There's only so many times you can go to the shops and look at non-essential items. Um, there's only so many times you can watch the news without wanting to throw something at the telly. Um, so for me, it's sort of been a, a relearning um, curve. Um, but I, I've also found that like stuff like this, like I'm, I'm doing a PhD, like having time to sort of actually delve into my research and like not be bothered. I'm finding that really um, useful. Um, and so for me, sort of resilience is a constant learning process. Like you think you're resilient and then nope, nope, something's going to come out of the left fields and you're going to have to learn it all over again. I think um, what you said about thinking that you're resilient, or you were resilient before, I think as artists or people that work in the arts, I would argue that we all have a strong level of resilience anyway. But you are right. It's not until you're putting something like this and you're like, oh god like my resilience was you know 40 percent, and i need it to be 90 um so yeah i really yeah. resonated with your point i wondered um if you've managed to find any activities that you've all been doing together it, it, for my, uh, my family or yeah we my dad is a really good cook um and we always have a meal together 
um, and that's quite nice. Um, and I haven't actually sat at a dinner table probably in 13, 14 years. Um, mm. So to sit at a physical table that's separate from everything else and have a meal um, is really nice. But going back to your point about resilience, I'm bipolar. Um, and I was really surprised that given everything that happened this year, I lost my, my flat, I lost my partner. Um, I had to move back in with my mum and dad. I lost all my work that I didn't have an episode Mm. I've been you know and I think when we talk about resilience like it's really important to recognize that resilience isn't just this one thing that sits across everything you can have resilience in one part of your life and then not in another and then in multiple parts of your life and then not in others um and that's the thing that has amazed me from this year is like I haven't had an episode yet <laughs> so yeah and I'm, I'm, I, I think it's going to be really interesting. You know, this is the first conversation we've really had beyond the team about resilience and what it means. Um, and obviously, potentially, um, you know, there'll be conversations we have with artists, groups of artists. It'll be interesting to have when we have these conversations with community groups. And actually, I'm really fascinated about the differences, you know, in terms of even geographically, what's the resilience of a group of... Of, of, of adults in Basingstoke compared to a group of adults in Gosport. You know, what, what are the things that people are talking about? Is there, is there um, space to go and walk around more readily available in, in Basingstoke compared to Gosport? I'm, I'm, I think it, for us, it's gonna be a really, really um, interesting, moving, um, meaningful time for us. So that's, yeah. And that, that thing um, around resilience in one part of your life, but not others is really, really, really hits with me as well. Ali, did you want to say something that you look like you, yeah. You can read my body language. I can, yeah, yeah. 10 years I, now I can read it, yeah. I, I, think, I think the thing that struck me from what everyone said um, is how much relationships have deepened because we tend to see COVID as a really negative thing and obviously it is, it stopped us all in our tracks, it stopped work, people have lost money, you, you know, personal things have happened to us and it's been devastating in many ways. But there is something coming out of it, which is that we are connecting more. We, we genuinely are. And I think mm. people are, you know, Josh is, is going for a walk and talking on the phone with his friend. And uh, and Hayley, you're doing yoga with your husband. And Dewey, you're sitting around the dinner table with your parents. And I think there's, a, there's something really, really lovely, actually, about that. That how um, this, can, this, and I, I don't like to liken it to the war because there's no way COVID is like the war. But um, I think it's that sort of same um, sort of aesthetic of, of bringing people together to cope with a really tough time and it's bringing out the best in some of us not with everyone I'm totally aware of that and there's still a lot of struggles but it's giving some of us um, that a bit more fight and it's making us all stronger I think and able to cope with things in different ways and perhaps that that then gives us the the strength to help somebody else that maybe isn't coping as well. And I think that's that's quite important. Mm. So that's my, yeah, that's my two pairs work. Um, thanks, Alana. Alana's teaching. So thank you, Alana. Go teach, go do well. Thank you, good to see you. Um, has anyone else got anything to add on, on, on resilience? Um, I'd quite like there to be an opportunity for you to just ask general questions about either the programme we've got or anything about fluid motion that you want to know about. Um, I'm keen on Go for it. Yep. Yeah. Dowie. I'm going to be quiet after this because it'll just turn into me talking to Lee, um, which I can do at any time. Um, <laughs> my, I, I agree with everything that Ali said. Um, I would, I'm just very, very cautious about this equation of resilience with strength. Mm -hmm. um, and this idea that in order to be resilient, you have to be strong. I think that's a, I think that's a widely recognized trope but I don't think it's one that is healthy or necessarily true. I know for me, my resilience comes from flexibility rather than strength. I tried to be strong, strong, mm. um, and that didn't work for me. It might work for other people, um, but I know from my own experience of resilience, it's the flexibility that I give myself that makes me resilient, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think the biggest thing I've learned is that I can't beat myself up about feeling like I can't, I don't, I don't want to do that. I can't face something today. You know, the best thing for me is 
if I have to spend three hours laying on my bed reading a book because I can't at that moment I can't get into it back before all this I would I would have said that that was Lee giving up failing whatever but now I recognize that as 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 the flexibility I allow myself to have that time out because I know I need it then I'll be better when I come back or I'll be, I'll be more productive when I come back or I think it's given me personally Covid has given me the opportunity to to not not um, apologise if I need an hour lunch break, or you know I would have maybe sat in it at my desk in front of the funding bid. Do you know what I mean? So I think I think I think I think it's giving myself permission more to to, to sort of to sort of take time out for me. But anyway, yeah. So great, great. Oh, really? What's on? Is this salon? Yeah, it's. Uh, oh no, Louise. Sorry, I can't make verbal contribution. Thanks to people for sharing. And the turtle, I found resilience by being in nature, watching the changing seasons, making connections with my community and creating things together. We did lots of singing on the doorsteps when allowed with our neighbor, nominating a song each week. We also created a gratitude tree, that's nice. And hung up messages on the tree at the end of our close. Connecting with others makes me feel resilient. It may, in myself and helps me feel I've done something constructive with others. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Um, and this idea of, 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 of bringing people together, you know, the idea of singing on doorsteps and things is something we're looking at with our outdoor performance work. So, Brill, thank you, Louise, for that. Um, anyone got any general questions? Because we'll finish up in, in five, ten minutes. Um, I, we don't make these any longer than an hour. Um, but has anyone got any any questions about any element? It doesn't have to be necessarily resilience now. Can, you know, Flu Conversations for us is about just opening up the company to people, um, whether that's how do you get involved or how do you volunteer, whatever, then please do um, ask questions if you have any. Some of you've worked with us before, some of you do work with us, some of you know of us, so there might not be loads of questions, but it's just um, a useful chance. Also, because we're recording these, people then watching it back later might have that same question. So if anyone's got anything they think they could, they want, they want to ask about anything, then please do um, go for it. Faye looks like she's going to, but am I reading the body language wrong there? <laughs> I'm wondering what date the festival is this year. Festival I was about year. to look on the website. But... It's the 11th of September. 11th, cool. Yeah, um, and that won't change. So that no, again, yeah. will either be online like we did it last year, in the, in one in the park altogether, although that's probably not going to happen, or dotted around Basingstoke and your satellite perform, uh, nice. events. Nice. Yep. Um, yeah, anyone else got any? Josh is unmuted. <laughs> You're very quick on it, aren't you, Lee? I'm very good, actually. I'm a good, I, yeah, I didn't realize I had this in me. Yeah, that you good. compare. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's interested to ask, but it's nice to speak to other artists as well. How have you found the uh, the switch to doing things online? Because, um, obviously, I would prefer to be doing live theater. Um, but what I have found is um, a new way to work and a new audience. And um, obviously I'd love to be doing what I normally do, but I found different things that I can do, which has been quite nice. Um, so I'm just wondering, has it affected people's audience? Has it um, helped you or is, has it been an obstruction? I'll open that out before we, I know, I know Faye's done quite a bit of work online, I think, Faye, haven't you? Um, yeah, anyone else has got anything to add? I think, yeah, I'll let other people talk before talk about our own and Natalie can maybe talk about our stuff. Um, so I teach dance um, kind of to several different groups and stuff um, but primarily sort of young people. We've seen some children really shy away from it like I can't be anywhere near the screen and then we've seen like literally everything in between to the child that has fully just blown us away with their improvement over this time because they're in their little comfort zone they're in their house and they can just do their thing um so it's, it's it is really interesting because there there is everything in between um from a motivation point of view it's hard like motivating my team um but we very much bounce off each other um so i know when they're having a rough week or vice versa um so that's been really nice we've done things that we would never ever have done before um uh, so we did like a online show um and stuff and that was really interesting um but yeah different isn't yeah. it yeah. <laughs> sorry uh, did your number of participants drop or anything because of having to do things online or has it 
yeah so um yeah it it has dropped yeah. um but um we we were very clever late in the sense that we didn't we didn't pressurize people to come on and I, th- I genuinely think that made a lot of difference in the sense that we weren't like you have to pay your fees you have to come on and do this yeah um but we were we were in a we were literally a week away from doing our big theater show um before lockdown so we were in a very kind of like how do you just come on and rehearse the routines like do we want to make new material because we obviously at the beginning we had no idea how long this would go on for um so we were kind of in a tricky position with that and then we didn't do a weekly online thing until literally this january and then we were um very shocked at how many people really committed to that so i think at this point they need structure they want to know something is happening every week um we would have taught for four nights a week and extra rehearsals and stuff but now we're just teaching one night a week and just pulling it really back for everyone's screen time has just helped everyone um and kind of like having a successful hour for those kids instead of all right bits Mm -hmm. here and there throughout the week um but yeah um that's me sorry (laughs) she might away (laughs) natalie do you want to talk about what's going on there sounds weird do you want to talk about our challenges with online um i think there's two sides of it i think artistically um we have been able to maybe reach and talk to more people that we wouldn't necessarily have to partly because people have more time to have to have the luxury of talking um so I think in a way connecting further afield to different artists or groups has been really beneficial in terms of online engagement um sort of uh educational or community workshops that we've done have been really hard (laughs) um it's a similar situation to to Faye really we at the first first lockdown I went in virtually to schools to deliver workshops and um I've just got no idea what's going on (laughs) you can't see you can't hear the teacher is there and and prompting and and assisting but you know it's not the same you you know as a teacher as a practitioner you want that control because you know how to best get out of whatever you're doing with these young people so um that was really really tricky um but they they did get it and actually what they made was was really lovely and as a result of that we had two lovely films from primary schools talking about how they deal how what they did when they felt stressed and how they overcame that um and so uh, what Faye said earlier about stripping it back is I think really essential for online in any capacity because people don't want to be on here all day you can't sense an atmosphere or or anything like that so I think it has to be quick it has to be sharp it has to be simple so if you just do one task or one question that's enough Whereas before, if you were delivering something, you know, face to face, you would spend the whole day and you might get three or four things done. So I I think it's about small stripping it back to basics for anything online. Yeah. Cool. Um, (laughs) Any other questions from anyone before we finish? Any other questions? I'll do... Louise has had some catastrophic team fails with workshops. She's been taking part in creative conversations with isolated older people on the phone. It's a process rather than it's process rather than outcome led. Although some incredible outcomes and outputs have come out of this, it's about empowerment, finding the joy that can exist, focusing on what you can do, whilst recognizing there are things you cannot. And um, where do you think empowerment fits into the idea of resilience? So where do we think that empowerment fits into the idea of resilience? I agree with Dowie that resilience is not the same as strength. Any thoughts about empowerment? anyone something to think I I think I think these questions is great for us this because 
now we're getting into we talked about the planet resilience the year launch it now now all this stuff is brilliant because this is material i'm so excited about answering these questions and sort of embedding all this sort of stuff across the work so um i just want to thank everyone for all their, their input on this it's amazing um has anyone got any any comments about that or any other last questions before we finish up i'm just gonna do a little is that a hand Haley, or is that just a sort of resting is a hand yeah a casual hand to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got a question. Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say I've worked mostly, well, more with old adults um online, um, and adults. Um, and it's actually been the more consistent and positive um response than the younger people we've been working with. And actually they've really loved it and have really said that actually they would love it if it would continue online it was more accessible they didn't have to think about traveling or what they were wearing they could just do it and have you know feel like they weren't being watched so there was that like safety in actually not being in a class or a studio environment <clears throat> so i guess it's kind of that um while obviously as a teacher you know you lose a lot and that you don't get that atmosphere like you're saying actually that atmosphere and that community from being in a class but i think kind of linking with what louise said that empowerment for them of the, the safety of of still feeling that they were connected to a group but also that they were kind of individual and isolated by themselves actually really helped them um and yeah so i just thought i'd say that because actually there's that positive for some of them it was really a positive thing being online um and kind of what you said i think it was natalie about reaching people who potentially wouldn't normally come or do something because they were either embarrassed or they couldn't access it or couldn't get there um so I think that's one of the really great things about doing online stuff. And I th you know, for, for our festival last year, we, we, we did it completely online. And obviously everything's still up. Usually our festival would happen one day in the park and that'd be it. We'd have a little video made of the summary and the highlights and that would be it. Whereas now our, our entire programme from last September is still online. So people can still go and watch it right now and, and engage with it. You know, and we had over 60 our over 65's audience for the festival just rocketed last year and that's due to the accessibility of it you know the idea that they can it can be beamed into i think someone beamed it into a care home living room and it was on it was on the tv and you know and, and i think for us moving forward while we don't want to go we're going to do everything online or we're going to do you know for us it's about it's about making getting the balance right of still making high quality art that's live but also high quality online and digital content and i think it's about it's about making it making them interlink and i think you know live streaming the festival if we're outside this year to the website so we can still capture that audience for us you know is is really that's what we've learned last year and really useful and and the website for us presents a really exciting opportunity so um yeah and that empowerment of people who can't necessarily who, who as well maybe feel that they can't face going out into an arts festival environment or you know crowded environment or 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 a highly cultural environment whatever it is you know, I think we're always going to keep the element of as much as possible can be digitally accessed, I think, for us. Um, so, yeah, that's that's really, it's really, um, it's really good stuff. Uh, Ali, do you want to, is that something from you there? No, no, no. I'm reading body language and I'm quite, I'm getting it right sometimes. Um, Brill. So if no one else has got any questions, I'll, I'll um, flag up. Obviously, we do these every month. Next, it's always the last Thursday of every month. Um, the Times... I think we're going to stick with one, but they might they might change. But but if you know if anyone wants to continue joining us for the months ahead, please do. Next next month we're going to talk about um, specifically a project we're doing with the NHS around personalised care. So we're working on on a project um, to personalisation is, is is something that the NHS have been doing for a while, which is trying to get people to take ownership of their healthcare. Um, and we're doing a, an arts theatre project to to sort of highlight what that is for people. So we're again sort of consulting around what what people's experiences of the health care system are sounds fun um but obviously we'll make it fantastically fun um and i think ali was going to be leading on that one um in february um so do do come and join us for that yes can i just point out that there are four different healthcare systems in the country and that the conflation of the english nhs is problematic for people in other constituencies we will get to that later <laughs> Yes, I know. Yeah. As, as the annoying Welshman in the room. I, yeah, I think, I think that's something to think about actually as we talk about the project and explain the project to people and think about what that is. And I think, yeah, let's have a conversation about that separately. Um, yeah, so that's 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 February's. Um, 
so yeah so thank you um thank you all for joining today really 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 appreciate it and you know it kicks us off it kicks us off talking about resilience and thinking about the exciting plan of action for the way forward you know spent several months just sort of our head in funding bids and applications and now you know it's about talking to people and and, and creating work now hopefully so so yeah thank you for giving up an hour um Again, if you want to talk to any of us in the meantime, fire us an email, send us an email, just please do. Um, uh, our emails are on the website. Um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Um, have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Bye, Thanks, Dave. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye.